Hello, this is Dr. Alex Vasquez. What I'd like to do in this quick video is introduce you to one of my newest books, which is Migraine Headaches, Hypothyroidism, and Fibromyalgia, Assessments and Therapeutic Approaches Using Integrative Chiropractic, Naturopathic, Osteopathic, and Functional Medicine. This book is available from my website, optimalhealthresearch.com. It's also available from createspace.com, which is a publisher owned by amazon.com. And the book is also directly available from amazon.com. I think most doctors and patients are familiar with the 1990 uh, American College of Rheumatology criteria for fibromyalgia. These criteria called for the presence of at least uh, 11 out of 18 uh, tender points. These 18 tender points are uh, quantified by nine paired locations of what are called uh, fibromyalgia tender points. These tender points are located on either side of the occiput, uh, lower cervical spine or the low neck. Uh, trapezius muscle in the shoulder, also the supraspinatus muscle, um, second rib anteriorly, lateral epicondyle of the elbow, which is where most people may have experienced uh, so-called tennis elbow at one point or another, uh, the gluteal region, uh, the greater trochanter of the hip, and also the medial fat pad of the knee. Uh, these criteria for the diagnosis of, of uh, fibromyalgia were updated in 2010, and I've posted a uh, excerpt and summary in my commentary on these uh, new criteria on the website. So if you go to OptimalHealthResearch.com, you can access this, uh, these revised criteria as well as my commentary uh, directly from the website. In 2010, the American College of Rheumatology supported the publication of a new set of guidelines for fibromyalgia. Uh, very curiously, the authors state that one of their objectives was to create criteria that do not require tender point examination. Uh, at first, this seemed rather odd to me because the uh, previous clinical criteria had relied almost entirely on uh, tender point examination, and here they were 20 years later saying that tender point examination wasn't required. Tender point examination from a doctor's perspective only takes about 60 seconds to perform. It's non-invasive. Again, it was previously the standard by which the diagnosis of fibromyalgia was made. And it's also a reasonable and responsible component of patient care. Physical examination of patients with pain uh, is certainly the standard. Uh, perhaps even more interesting was the fact that these new guidelines were supported by Lilly Research Laboratories. Uh, this is the research and development uh, department of Eli Lilly and Company, one of the world's largest drug companies. And also they are the manufacturer of Cymbalta, which is one of the only FDA-approved drugs for the treatment of fibromyalgia. Among patients labeled with fibromyalgia, the new criteria increase the percentage of patients diagnosable by criteria from 75 to 88%. Whether the motivation to expand the patient population diagnosed with fibromyalgia is altruistic or financially motivated is subject to debate. The authors of the new guidelines also note several quote unquote important problems with the 1990 criteria, such as uh, patients who improve or whose symptoms and tender points decrease could fail to satisfy diagnostic criteria. Well, that's because maybe they no longer have the disease. Furthermore, these authors state that another problem was there was little variation in symptoms among fibromyalgia patients. Again, that is to be expected. If the criteria are clinically valid, uh, they should result, the, the criteria that is, should result in a rather narrow definition of the disease. Uh, and therefore, the clinical presentation uh, and symptom clusters should be rather tightly bound, so to speak. So I thought the language that they used in this article was kind of curious because uh, what they call important problems really are not problems. Uh, patients should be able to get better from this disease and no longer be diagnosable and therefore no longer need these medications. And furthermore, the fact that many of the patients have the same symptoms is consistent with an accurate uh, and tight diagnosis and good criteria. Uh, so what I say here in my review, which is available from my website, is clinicians should note that these so-called problems are not problems at all because patients who improve and, those, and thus no longer meet diagnostic criteria should not be considered to have an active disease or diagnosis. And high quality clinical criteria should indeed result in a specific definition of a clinical disorder and thus in a well-defined cohort of patients. Correcting these problems results in patients being nice, be, sorry, being diagnosed for longer periods of time, uh, making them long-term patients and customers. This also results in more patients being diagnosed with fibromyalgia, so we end up with more patients, or in, a, in the case of uh, drug companies, we end up with more customers. So 
take a look at my uh, commentary and these uh, criteria if you'd like. It's available on my website, optimalhealthresearch.com. The new criteria rely on a summation of two tallies. One is called the widespread pain index, and the other is called the symptom severity. Uh, com com combining these two indices uh, provides us a mathematical score, uh, which we could uh, abbreviate as WPI and SS, and you can see how the mathematics works. WPI needs to be above 7, and the SS needs to be above 6, or the WPI could be between 3 to 6 and the SS above 9. Pain must have been consistent for at least three months and must not be attributable to any other cause. So let's contrast these new criteria with the older criteria that I reviewed previously in this um, video. These are the 2010 fibromyalgia diagnostic criteria. Uh, widespread pain index, WPI, each positive location receives one point for a maximum of 19 points. You'll notice that these are uh, quite different from the 1990 criteria. Uh, criteria by these uh, new standards are shoulder girdle, uh, upper arm, lower arm, uh, hip and the buttock area, upper leg, lower leg, jaw, uh, chest, abdomen, neck, upper back, and lower back. The interesting thing about the generality of these uh, locations, in contrast to the rather specific locations of the previous fibromyalgia tender points, is that a lot more patients are going to end up being diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I think is subject to uh, clinical interpretation and also some uh, financial considerations as well when we consider the fact that there are only two drugs uh, currently approved for fibromyalgia and that one of the drug companies and manufacturers of this med one of these medications was actually the sponsor of these revised criteria. I'm not saying anything's wrong with that necessarily, but it certainly uh, should make us, you know, pay attention to what some of the underlying motivation might be. Symptom severity is divided into two parts, uh, at least according to the way I've um, tried to make these criteria uh, interpretable and applicable. Uh, we can look at fatigue, waking unrefreshed, and cognitive symptoms. We can rank these as either non-existent, of course, zero, mild, moderate, or severe for one, two, and three points, respectively. Other symptoms that we'll look at uh, in this next box uh, could also be rated on a zero to three scale for either not for either nothing, of course, being zero, a few symptoms at one, moderate at two, and a great deal of symptoms at number three. Again, though, when we look at these symptoms, we'll see that these are rather nonspecific, certainly not ever considered specific for uh, fibromyalgia by the previous definition. And furthermore, we can see that some of these uh, could be applicable to a lot of other conditions, some of which deserve more um, urgent, let's say, uh, consideration as far as a, uh, accurate diagnosis. For example, uh, you'll see that one of the considerations here is Renaud's phenomenon. Well, Renaud's phenomenon also is seen in patients who have rheumatoid arthritis and scleroderma to potentially um, health-threatening, if not life-threatening conditions. Uh, some patients do actually end up dying from rheumatoid arthritis and scleroderma, so we need to take those conditions seriously. Um, but many of these symptoms associated with fibromyalgia now were not considered part of the diagnostic cluster in previous years. So, And you'll see on the uh, second to the bottom line there, sun sensitivity, that would correlate more with lupus than it ever would have with fibromyalgia. So. I'm a bit perplexed by some aspects of these new criteria because they are so broad. It's going to result in a lot more patients being diagnosed with fibromyalgia who either don't have fibromyalgia in its true form or uh, who have another condition which the doctor may or may not be uh, astute in diagnosing. So uh, I think that these new criteria are a bit too broad and I think it's going to result in a lot of patients being medicated for fibromyalgia when in fact they don't have it. Uh, and it's going to result in some patients who have other conditions being diagnosed with fibromyalgia, and therefore it's going to result in the delay of the uh, accurate diagnosis. Thank you for your interest in this uh, topic, fibromyalgia, and its accurate clinical diagnosis. You'll find this and much more information uh, reviewed in my new book called Migraine Headaches, Hypothyroidism, and Fibromyalgia. This book was published in 2012. The cost is about $25 for 282 pages. It's available on Amazon.com, and it's also available from Amazon's publisher, CreateSpace.com. This is Dr. Vasquez, and thank you for your attention.